uh, entity called Standards and Practices. And Howard is, has written for television, so I'm sure he can speak more about this than I can. But generally what happens is the writers write a script, and the people at Standards and Practices read it, and then they give notes to the producers, and they say, you can't do this, you can't say this. And depending on the producers, some of them ignore it, like the Simpsons producers normally ignore the notes that they get. In fact, Matt Groening did a, a stage show at a university where he just did nothing but he read the notes from the Standards and Practices people, and they were so hilarious. Um, it was like an entertaining hour of him just reading these actual notes from the network. But, um, uh, you know, depending on the producers, they'll, sometimes they'll, they'll kowtow. And, and okay. A couple months back, I forgot what show I was watching, uh, this, there was a character who shows up at a, in a Jewish dining room the store in Brooklyn, New York, and, and, and forgives him for killing Jesus. And, and, the guy, and the guy says, no, no, we took the contract out. We were the only ones who were smart enough to do it. I take full responsibility. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> and, and I felt really much happier with that presentation of a Jew than, than with a lot of what I see of Jew, Jewish presentations on television and the movies. Um, all, all due respect, the idea of using the jazz singer as, the, as the, 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 the structure for a story about a Jew in a, in a cartoon show is, you know, it cleaves to the cliche. Yeah, it's pretty. It's, I think it's but, again, but I think it embraces the cliche as it's cleaving. You know, I think it has to. I don't think they ever intended to go further. Than yeah, that. and they got stuck on the, you know, hoisted on their own petard, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, from my experiences, I, I come from a you know a long line of bigoted, racist, and you know, hostile, you know, liberal Jews, you know, who are completely confused and contradictory in their sensibilities and expectations. Um, you know, uh, I grew up in a, in a Puerto Rican, black, Italian, and Jewish neighborhood. We hated everybody. Everybody hated everybody else. There was nothing like a, you know, a melting pot culture. It was a series of cultures that were at each other's throats. Once a year, every year, all the men would get together and rent porn films and take one of the apartments and spend the night smoking, drinking beer, and watching porn films. The mothers of all races, colors, and creeds sit in another room smoking and hating their husbands, and the children would all get together and trash a bedroom. And the, 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 the culture of Judaism in, 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 a, in, in the United States is so polyglot and so completely smeared across the country that, that there really is not a, 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 a unified semantic, a, 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 an idea that, that, that supports across the country. You know, I'm, I'm from New York. I live in California. I live in a small town in California where assumptions are made about me because I'm Jewish, which are completely absurd. They're completely ridiculous. When I do that sort of stuff in my, in my working profession, I try to include the contradictory nature of who I am and who I was and the people who raised me to make that work. You know? Uh, when I grew up, I grew up in poverty. And my landlords were all German Jews who made it out of Germany in the 1930s before Hitler rose. <coughs> and they got their money out. And they were the slumlords. They were the worst people I knew. They were truly horrible people. Okay? And my mother taught me to, 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 to be very, very careful about German Jews. I told Alex this. You've heard this. Alex has heard this before. And so, and, and so it, it inculcates my feelings about my own culture. Okay? I mean... People I grew up with who were our landlords regarded me and my parents as gypsies. We were, we were, we were dread, we were unto men. We were less than. So they had, these people, even though they were being persecuted by you, carried, your, carried German prejudices in the 1930s with them to the United States. Think about that. So the culture is so broad and so utterly lacking cohesion that it's impossible to depict anything traditional or typical. Except perhaps in a temporal context, in a period idea, contemporary or, contem or, or, or a period notion. So it, it's really so broad that it's impossible to, to do it in a cliche and, get, and have an idea that says, oh, that's what it is. Because it isn't. One more question? Oh. No. Yeah, then one last question for me. You both have been very often in Germany at comic conventions and things like that. Are the comic people, are the comic fans in Germany different than in the USA or in other countries? Are they different, the people in Germany, I, the comic fans? I think, uh, 
for me, I, you know, because I do primarily humor, um, I just noticed that there's more of a love for humor comics here. So the, mm -hmm. the fans seem much more enthusiastic about what I do than, um, than they do in the, in the United States. That being said, I work on the comic book version of one of the best loved uh, group of characters in the universe. So it's hard for me to go anywhere and not get people who tell me how much they love The Simpsons. Now they usually say, um, I really love The Simpsons, and then they just talk about the TV show, and then it becomes clear that they've never read one, one of the comic books <laughs> at all. Um, whereas here in Germany, you know, we definitely get the sense that the fans really do read the comic books and they love it as much as the show. So that's kind of my experience. I don't know. How it you guys are just better mannered. Uh, I mean, America, that's true. I mean, Ameri American fans have a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. and behavior that is, that is just ridiculous. Uh, I'm, I'm quite serious. You know, um, the only way you guys get like that is on lines. You know, you're, you're impossible on lines. You know, you're, 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 what? I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize you were standing in front of me. Um, but generally speaking, in terms of... Michael's falling asleep. We're putting it um, Generally speaking, the German fans are more pleasant, more knowledgeable, and better, be better behaved and better mannered. Um, because I think you were raised by parents who expect you to behave like adults in public. <laughs> I know the truth, it's okay. okay. I think also... Um, I think German fans, I get the sense that there's less of a, well, let me rephrase this. When I'm doing a signing at a convention or a store in the United States, somebody brings a stack of comic books up for me to sign. Nine times out of ten, they're going to end up on eBay. And here I, I don't get that feeling as much. I get the feeling that, um, you know, that people are really fans, and, then, and if they get a sketch from me, it's something that they're going to keep forever. And they really have a, a true love for what we do, and it's not just a commodity. That's not always the case. Um, Some of you are whores. Yeah. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Don't look at each other. Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 never, I never thought of that. That's quite, that, that, quite true. Yeah. You know? Uh, I, know, I know a guy in the States who just basically has no, makes no bones about doing this, rolling it over, and I really don't care. He can do whatever he likes with it, because in the States they don't do them for free. You know, we sell them. Um, you guys get, get, get them for free because you fly us over here and make us do it. <laughs> now, Alex knows where my children are. Yeah, I think that's a nice Schlusswort, and I want to darauf hinweisen, that beide Künstler auf dem Comic Festival die nächsten Tage zu Gast sind. Beide werden signieren, beide werden Zeichenkurse geben. Howard wird zeigen, wie man ein Bettmobil zeichnet. Which I think is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Zeichenkurse geben und Signalaktionen. Danke. Ja, und wir würden uns sehr, sehr freuen, wenn wir euch noch bis zum 26. im Künstlerhaus und in vielen Locations hier in Wittenstadt, im München, der Stadtbereich begrüßen dürften. Und vielen, vielen Dank, dass ihr alle so zahlreich erschienen seid. Und ja, ich wünsche noch einen schönen Abend. Auf Wiedersehen. Und vielen Dank. Und vielen Dank.